morning, everybody, and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Charlotte. Today, I'm your host, Alan. If this is your first time, we are delighted that you have chosen to join us today. We are extremely grateful for this opportunity to touch so many people and to share the wonderful happenings here at CSL Charlotte. So please feel free to visit our website, CSLCharlotte.org, put in a prior request, and subscribe. We add our recordings each and every week. So now, let me tell you a little bit about who we are. The Center for Spiritual Living Charlotte is a new thought community living an ancient wisdom philosophy based on the science of mind. This science of mind philosophy was developed in the early 20th century by writer and lecturer Ernest Holmes. Dr. Holmes was a man on a mission. He studied truth from all of the world's religious traditions and spiritual paths. Home developed a fresh new way for us to look at ourselves and how we fit into our world. So let me tell you a little bit about what we do here. At CSL Charlotte, every philosophy is, along, is honored along with every race, sexual orientation, and physical distinction. This is a diverse community where you belong. There are many paths to the divine. We can call it God, good, peace, love, or spirit. Whatever you call it, that is your power that resonates within you. You do not have to leave your philosophy or nature of knowledge. You can join us anytime. And we also recognize and refer to many holy scriptures, such as the Bible, the Quran, the Bhagavad Gita, and Dhammapada, just to name a few. So let me tell you about our grand vision for, for this community. Our vision statement is to create a spiritual community, uh, creating and preparing a succession of future leaders who can fully integrate, teach, and expose the science of mind principles, messages, and practices that strengthen the mind, body, and spirit of individuals. One of our aims is to create a high collective consciousness for everyone in the community. We teach everyone the tools to do just that. So come and join us as we meet each Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. And I would like to share a thought for today uh, before I introduce our fabulous leader. Because true belonging only happens when we present our authentic, imperfect self to the world. Our sense of belonging can never be greater than our level of self-acceptance. And this is from writer uh, Brene Brown in her book, Daring Greatly, how the courage to be vulnerable transforms the way we live, love, parent, and lead. So, so welcome everyone, and enjoy our service as we celebrate this powerful being which lives within each and every one of us. So now, I'll literally pass the mic over to our fabulous spirit leader, Reverend Rodale. Oh my God, that. Alan Lilly, the big A, the AP, our MC is full of surprises. I hope you heard what he said about belonging because you're going to love why he said it. We want to first of all say welcome to all the love streamers, virtual community, everybody everywhere. Welcome to CSL Charlotte, the Mind, Body, Spirit Center. And so in celebrating our integration of the mind, body, and spirit, we at CSL Charlotte open up our Sunday celebration service with an affirmative prayer. This Sunday service is special because it's 12, 11, 11. That's the day that my mom made her transition. That's the only way I... Um, celebrate today is every day because every time I have to write that date, that date on passwords and stuff like that, it's none of your business where I write them. <laughs> anyway, this is my mom's celebration day. So it's special. So anyway, the opening prayer that we're going to have today is da -da -da -da, somebody who's going to be blessing us very powerfully and phenomenally. And that is Reverend Millie Mills. She is blessed by the powerful 
source within herself and she knows it. And that's what makes me love her. Since I've known Millie, I have always known and seen that side of her. And it really resonates well with my soul. So I'm truly digging that she felt compelled to spend her time with CSL Charlotte as she moves through her breeding ground to ordination. Yay. So she not only um, is going to be our prayer team coordinator, she's going to lead us today with a very powerful prayer. So you're in for a treat because she's, one, she's the one that's going to open us up. Plus, she is our prayer coordinator. So listen to this because this all this talk is about the aspect of belonging, and she belongs really here. So I don't know where she thinks she's going, but she belongs here. No, okay. Anyway, <laughs> anyway Reverend Millie, please do the honors. I'm not planning on going anywhere. You guys are stuck with me for a few minutes, and thank you. What a beautiful introduction to step into. And so let us pray a brief affirmative prayer. We we'll just take in that deep breath. That breath of life, that breath of peace, that breath of love, that breath of being everywhere at once. I know that spirit is absolute and spirit is everywhere mm -hmm. present. And as God is everywhere present, I also know this for us. There is no sense of not belonging anywhere as there is nowhere that we cannot belong. We are one in God. Every breath that is taken on this planet right now is breathed by that one source. Every heart that beats on this planet right now is beating from that one source. So really, how can we not belong everywhere? We are perfect, whole, and complete like we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And our sense of belonging lies in that fact that we are all one and we are all here to live as one. And I know that today our service is blessed by Reverend Rosedale and for every participant that takes part of this service today because we all come together as one in that one mind and that one place of love. And so with that, I say, thank you, light. Thank you, God. Thank you, spirit. Thank you for all that is. Thank you for that mind that makes it so. And I release this prayer into the law and we can affirm this together by saying, and so it is. Amen. And so it is, everybody. Oh, my God. Oh, she just gets... Blah, 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 blah. I am vibing. <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> oh, anyway, our reader today, Dariba Trailer, a.k.a. JT. You know, I love my names for people because they just remember... It's just ways for me to get them in my heart and keep them there. So her plan today is to make the talk title the aspect, the aspect, you know, the, the, the aspect of belonging. It, it's she's going to make it come alive. You know, she collects a lot of science of mind literature as well as science materials. So whenever I ask for a reading, she never has to go very far, but to her house, right? So between the science, philosophy, and spirituality, not to mention that we are movie swappers together, we do very much in our connection with each other. So there has been an unspoken agreement within our connection before we met, and we entered into a relationship which opens the door to our talk today, the aspect of belonging. Remember, the aspect of belonging means more than a lot of things. Let me give you one example. It's just a beautiful thing. So after JT's reading, I invite you to listen to the song You're Perfect by Jamie Lula. Because today our talk title is The Aspect of Belonging. You like how I like to say things over and over because I know that if you say it about seven times, you get it. 
And so what JP's reading and this song is designed to show you something about that aspect of belonging. And so what I want to say is last week, I spoke about the voices we hear inside of us as um, has always been and will always be us conversing with that spirit within. So remember, when you wonder, spirit's going to give me this, spirit's going to give me that, spirit doesn't have to give you anything. You got it. Spirit is you. So now I invite you to take the words of this song and make them a conversation between you and spirit when you hear those words that say you're perfect. So listen to this first song and um, Jeriva's reading for this aspect of belonging. So JP, make it do what it do. Thank you, Reverend Rosedale. Good morning, everyone. Today's reading is going to be from the Science of Mind magazine. December edition, Guide for Spiritual Living, and it's titled Friendship and Community by Dr. Jim Van Cleef. The Greeks had two principal words for community love, agape and philia. The word agape is rare in classical Greek, having come into usage when the Hebrew Bible was translated into Greek in the third century BCE. Jesus used agape for love, which was defined by Martin Luther King Jr., as more than friendship or the love of God operating in the human heart. Philia or affection between good friends seems a level down from agape, but nevertheless is a good place to start. The Greek philosopher Aristotle had a lot to say about philia in the Nicomachean Ethics. He said friendship is critical in the larger community, indispensable as a means, noble, in itself, and effectively a bond of the state. To be friends, people must feel goodwill toward each other. That is, wish for each other's good and be aware of the other's goodwill. The cause of their goodwill must be one of three lovable qualities. The lowest level quality is one of mutual usefulness. Be friends with the butcher, the waiter, the barber, etc. Higher is the pleasure of simply enjoying each other's company, such as a witty and pleasant person. Both of these qualities are usually temporary, temporary and easily broken off. For Aristotle, the perfect and long-lasting kind of philia is when people love one another for their innate goodness, each resembling one another in virtue and wishing them good in respect of their goodness. This highest quality includes the other two. Good people who are friends also derive pleasure from one another and confer benefits on each other, but not vice versa. Not so good people can also enjoy utility and pleasure from each other. Aristotle knew friendship as a high form of love between good people seeking each other out, as Empedocles said, like seeks after like. This level of philia is quite close to what later became agape. Ernest Holmes, following Jesus's commandment, said we need to be the friend of the entire world and begin now to love everybody as we seek the good within them. Let us begin. And so it is. Oh, I love that. Breathe in real deep and long and take in that perfection that you are. You know, it's highly significant that as you exhale, you recognize that you are perfect. And like Millie said in that prayer, you belong anywhere that you think is worth your time. You see, you are free to spend time with people who love you and respect you. Remember, when Jamie Lula said, for the rest of this week, remember these words when he said, when I'm sad and so dark, shallow and in doubt, and I keep thinking I'm putting one foot in front of the other, how about letting yourself, when all of those struggles start to come, to remember I'm perfect, I'm golden, I am the light, I am my light. Oh, I'm perfect. Remember that. And now take another deep breath in. 
And as you slow breathe out, remember in short that you need to know your perfect, your golden. That's it. Now you can fit anywhere and everywhere you seek the aspect of belonging for yourself. So wiggle your fingers and your toes to integrate your mind, your body, and your spirit. And then look around your space before you come back into the service as if you're a brand new person in that space. And I know this. First, I want to give uh, a gratitude moment to my fabulous MC, MC Hammer, MC Allen, <laughs> who's just this fabulous dude to me. And you know, he is living. I see him living that aspect of belonging because he knows where he belongs and he better know he belongs to me. <laughs> You know, the topic, the aspect of belonging came to life with JT's reading. So thank you, JT, for that fabulous reading. And thank you, Reverend Millie Mills, for that beautiful opening prayer. Mm. And so speaking of prayer, I know Reverend Karen and Reverend Millie will continue to hold the high watch over this service today. And I'm shouting out blessings watching and listening to people and encouraging them in their lives. And one of the shout outs goes out to Reverend Dr. Wanda Wayman, who happens to be on in service today, which is good. And I know that all is well in her fabulous service, her surgery. You know what? I'm keeping my heart in gratitude for all those healings that I have witnessed just this week. Just there's so many healings that I'm hearing about. But another one I want to say that's always, I'm always watching it grow is the, um, in our consciousness minute, we still hold the high watch for Mary's son, Johnny, who actually recovered very well from the two major infections. And he's in rehab right now. He's going to rehab. So we're keeping our focus on him and Mary and the family. And so that, that, that's enough to know that God, spirit, the universe, all of that is hovering on this service right now. So if there's anything you feel you need, it's here. It is here. So I feel the security of God's protecting presence around the entire virtual congregation. You care for all the people, the places that you care for. So being that we're talking about the aspect of belonging, I know that it can be painful when you want to go somewhere and you find yourself around people who you don't feel want you. If you stay, I call that some type of uh, belonging with some desperation where you force yourself to fit in and be like, that never works. And so it's not necessary. So relax today. You see, because I'm talking about this because people, we talked about the high uh, group, uh, well, I don't know. We were talking about the hierarchy of needs back a, a couple of months weeks or whatever that time was. And we talked about the need. Well, you know what? One of those needs should be the need to belong. And it is on that pyramid. But I'm telling you, this is, uh, people need to belong so much that either they create a family or they have a great family that they stay close to or great friends, uh, great groups, and, and, and they also feel very worthy in these groups. And I say communities, um, because it makes people feel a part of a society, the society at large. So that can be through work, uh, school, sport, uh, teams, uh, religious or spiritual communities. There's so many different ways that we can definitely have that. Like, for example, JT's reading uh, about Aristotle, who is one of our ancestors and major to me philosophers 
way back in the, the third century, who said, and you know, if you know this is what was going on back then, you know it's real. Friendship is critical is in, in the words of that reading that JT read. It is critical in communities. It's indispensable as a being, noble in itself. And it's, a, it's an effective bond of the state of that friendship, right? It bonds us that, that uh, wonderful um, belonging. To be friends, people must wish each other goodwill and they must be aware of each other's goodwill. So for me, I never want to catch myself out there judging people because I don't know what a goodwill for that person is or me, but I know mine, you know? So I just tell myself, I catch myself sometimes and I say, listen, if you don't like what somebody's saying, either disagree, either disagree and uh, not disagree, but to yourself and zip it. You know, because nothing else works for you. It doesn't, it, you know, it makes no sense to try to convince another person of what you believe is that's different from you. So don't agree or don't disagree. Just be in the person's company if you choose. And if that's a mutual agreement that we can agree to disagree, then let it be. Because that is what makes a great relationship. But then again, if you can't, you know what to do. It's your choice to part ways, and it's okay. So know that all relationships, no matter what they are, disagreeable or non-disagreeable, work if you choose for them to work. You know, people need that sense of belonging, and it's important to belong to communities of people with similar interests. Mark that, similar interests. <laughs> you know, similar interests, what it does, really, it instills, it instills happiness in the community or the group. I'm a part of several communities and, um, and all of us have similar interests. And I'm a part of uh, uh, fitness and spiritual and nutritional communities. I got, I'm a part of two league of, league of coaches. I'm also, uh, I teach several classes and I, am a community in everything I do. Everything I've done in the past few weeks, years, years, have been all about communities for me in my life. Community is very important, very important. So a lot of times in my fitness community, I'm asked to sub a lot. And I find myself, and anytime I find myself saying, oh, I, I want to sub today, I do it. I'm in. Because I do it for two reasons. One, because I love everybody that's a part of that community and organization that I'm in. And we all have this similar um, mindset, like I said, similar. And because I love taking care of me while I'm taking care of everybody else. And another thing about a spiritual community, when I pray for people, I'm praying for me. Service and getting service. So for New Year's Eve, I'm going in early in the morning to sub for a cardio strength burn. Okay, whoever wants to come, guess who's getting the good, the good, uh, the good cardio burn? Me and them. So everything I do turns into community. So for all intents of pur and purposes, the door swings both ways when it comes to service in community. So. With that being said, being in community, if it works for you, I challenge you to do and to really think about doing that. You know, we join communities that are good for us. It's really very, very beneficial. And you'll hear again me a little bit touching on Aristotle, but I want to tell you about this recent research that I did on uh, about being part of community and how incredibly life-changing it is for people. This study I researched, it, 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 they tracked 3,300 people between the age of 40 and 65, and it followed, they followed them for 15 years. And the results they measured were through two questions, was number one, how often 
uh, that he did each individual spend time with other people and how many close friends do they have? Okay, so just knowing those two questions that they're following the for over 15 years, the results of it that the University of Michigan did, they showed an average that um, people who were involved in um, these communities and had a lot of friends live longer, not lived, live longer. This study showed that people who spend more time with others have reduced their risk of premature death. Mm, just know that. So, you know, when people feel a sense of belonging in their hearts and in their emotions and in their minds, life becomes easier for them and they feel more relaxed. So that's because there's a source, there's this energy, there's this power that's within us and it has a dire, dire, not dying, dire need to connect with other people. It just has to. It just works. Life works. That spirit within us wants to connect with us and people around us. It wants us to connect ourselves with it by spending our precious time. Alan said one of the things he's doing this week happens to be some more meditation, you know, and things of that nature. nature. This is a good thing. You know, um, also that that sense of belonging also creates a calmer world for each and every one of us being connected with each other in a community, in a bond, in friendships, in relationships. Because in community, people share their experiences. Okay, this is another real important thing. When people share their experiences with each other, they start to listen to other people and recognize how they are not alone with these crazy thoughts they may have. You may call your thoughts crazy. You hear somebody else say, oh, you say, well, hey, I ain't the only one. They can relate to others who share similar experience and interest to them, with them, right? So um, that sharing also, what it does when you listen to someone share and you actually listen, not just listen to them share so you can butt in and go but no listen and you know what happens when you do that an area for your lives open up so badly what you can hear because you say wow that is so familiar to me so what we do at CSL Charlotte is we have created this community over the past two years going into our third year. Wow, isn't that interesting? We know that all are welcome. We have a diverse spiritual community that celebrates, embraces, and nurtures the whole person of each and every one of us. And we have a very authentic, safe, and loving environment. It's true. Everybody says it and they don't just say it. They, they feel it. I can feel it when they say it. I can feel it when they say it. I can feel it when they feel it. I'm serious. I might be smiling, but that's because I'm happy that I'm a part of this community. Hey, you know, each and every one of us has at least one, if not several, of the same particular interest. That's why we are in this community that works for us. We provide a very safe, and um, uh, nurturing uh, environment, like I said, you know, and it really makes us have a very cool emotional belonging. You gotta have that emotional belonging. That's that aspect of belonging. That's an aspect of us. You see, our need to feel like we belong is incredibly a basic need. And it is what? A human need. So a spiritual community happens to be one of the many places where people come together with varied beliefs and practices. And what happened is we share teachings, rituals. Rituals are good. They don't necessarily have to be religious or spiritual. Rituals is getting up every morning, brushing your teeth, and you start on the right side. Okay, let's get real about the word rituals. Don't start, oh, 
No, rituals is a very important thing. We got them all day. We do them all day. And I taught, I taught a treatment, uh, not a treatment. I taught a great, wonderful practice yesterday for as a ritual for everybody to start doing. And this is going to turn all of them around. Wait till you hear that, that recording, uh, Timmy P. <laughs> And, and, and it's all about all of that. We do all of these things together. Spiritual communities provide a sense of emotional belonging because they offer the opportunity to express or explore the thoughts and feelings in a safe environment. You know, one of the many reasons I always wanted to be some uh, knee high to a tadpole, eight years old or whatever, why I always wanted to be a part of a spiritual community. I guess it was religious at one time for me because I came from uh, the, the, the uh, Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal movement. And I think that was great for me at that time. But today I understand where I come from way better. But here's the thing why I join and keep joining and keep desiring a spiritual community is because I have this saying that says, the better it gets, the better it gets. I said that in class yesterday. And I remembered when I said that, I get a better consciousness, not every week, every month, every day. Because I have them to think about. They think about me and it's all nothing but connections all day long for me. Another reason, I guess, is about me serving. Because I said, the, the service door swings both ways. I'm getting served while I'm serving. You better believe that. <laughs> Learning from other people, connecting. These are just all my reasons, right? And you figure out your own. Connecting with friends and growing relationships. You know, I'll even tell you that I'm so glad that JP chose to talk about Aristotle in her reading because that's all big when she talked about this aspect of belonging because her reading points out for us that before, well, you got to know that even before that, the first and second century, way before Jesus' time, that friendship and love was very important as a need. Of course, later on, all of our psychologists and scientists kept evolving more ideas around that. This is so key. But clearly, JT's reading said that Aristotle knew back in the third century, right, that friendship um, as a, was a high form of love between good people seeking each other out. Okay? Aristotle also, I'm going to do a little bit of probing because I, I really dig that. Those philosophers, him, Socrates, Plato, all of them, all of them, all of them. But see, the thing is, uh, based on my talk, actually, he said, um, I read something that, about him that said, perhaps we shall find the best good if the first thing we find is the function of the human being. And so what are the functions of the human being comes from what, the, what JT mentioned was the Nicomachean ethics. It was the, the Nicomachean ethics is a set of ethics. Uh -huh, I got that thing going, man. But it's a set of ethics that humans, this is, let me, let me go through it because you hear it a lot. When, they, when we say we, we are responsible for ourselves, well, you know what? From the first, second, third, Century, they said, our, well, Aristotle was the one they found it in today, but as far as I'm concerned. Humans are morally responsible for their actions because they voluntarily control their behavior. And as rational beings, they are aware of what they do. Okay? So don't get it twisted. There, I just don't think there's a lot of people who don't know what they're doing when they do the things they do. But anyway, let's just move on. Aristotle proved that that um, humans achieve their highest good through benefit. And what do I mean by benefit? Connecting with other people for happiness, that's a benefit. Peace, that's a benefit. Love, that's a benefit. 
fun. Oh, a big benefit, right? And then um, just awesome experiences that we have. And the best benefit of all for me about the reason I chose to be a member, always be a member, was I get to control my own life. Now, you may have a thing about the word control, but you don't get high prices. There has always been control in one way or another. And it goes like this. The truth is, either you're in control of your life or someone else is. And the reason that you may not feel in control is because maybe you may not know the real you. So I learned a long time ago that it is easy for me to learn and understand me. But I learned about me with the this when I became a New York City police officer way back in the day. But at that time, I didn't call it a community. But now I do understand why I would call it a community. So I'm grateful to know and understand that I just have this time for me. I create this time for me. So what I do now is I continue to stay self-aware and I create these wonderful affirmations. And you know, I would like to share one of them with you today. And that is pretty much gonna go into that next song. And that is, there is a power within me that continues to keep me aware, okay? So if you want to stay self-aware, just remember that power within you that continues to keep you aware, you know? And I just change up a lot. You know, maybe I might say that so, that power is stored, is the, the power of life is restored in me right now and whatever I got to say. So it's easy, guys, when it comes to the aspect of belonging. We know that we need to fulfill that, okay? But it is so easy to get lost in our own bubbles and forget that we're part of a global community going and coming every day. But we are because we're part of a big old society that we probably don't count every day because we got all these other things going on in our lives. So just let's understand that as we move forward this week, we feel the sense of belonging every single week, every single week in our consciousness meeting on Tuesday nights. Being a part of a spiritual community means that we are constantly aware of life, that it is a bigger thing than all of us. And each individual matters in the whole. We know that, we feel that, we sense that for real. So the aspect of belonging, just remember this for the rest of the week as you let this song come in and under show you some power. The next song creates this power in community. If you can really see it and just vision, just listen to the power behind the singers of this song as they sing. We will rise together. And if we fall, we will fall together. And that's some powerful togetherness. So let's get with this next song, y'all. Together. <laughs> We are braver, stronger. You see, sharing the different things amongst their community. There is what fabulousness in that. Become a notable part of a friendship. Become a group or a community where you feel that strong feeling. With CSO Charlotte, for me, when we rise, we rise together. Ruby GV always reminds me, we got your back. Someone oh, got me beaming, you know. But anyway, I'm going to hand the mic back to my fabulous MC. Big A. Lynn Lily. The team. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for that upbeat song, that inspiring message. Reminding us all about community and family and reflecting our own places where we belong. And like you and like you just said, a community that rises together, celebrates together, and stays together. So if you really enjoy this community, I invite you to just take a deep breath and, and realize that now it's time for us to celebrate for us to invite the systems to this community. 
in order to engage the Tia Tata community in the preparation for the succession of future generations. Leaders are created to fully integrate, teach, and expose the science of mind principles. Donations are made through time, talent, and treasure by people just like you, who not only see or feel the need for a community like this, but who want it. All right. Uh, so I invite you right now to go to our website, theindulgerola.org, and press the donate button where you can make your donations payable through credit card or check made payable to CSL Charlotte. Uh, your checks can be sent to the address on our website. Donations can also be made through Zelle and Venmo, as additional information can be found on our website. And when you go shopping tomorrow to support your community and your family, feel free to click on the Amazon Smile link. As, as, because it's another easy way to support the, our community. So now I invite you to take a deep breath and and put your hand on your heart and really just let those words these words sink in as you re repeat with me. Okay. Prosperity and abundance flows from the law of circulation of giving and receiving. As I give. To the Center for Spiritual Living Charlotte, I give of my time, talent, and treasure, which open the path to my grateful return of good seven times or more in my life. I am grateful for the universal power that exists to continuously open the path for all prosperity and abundance that we all receive and I now prosper. So now I invite you to just close your eyes and take a deep breath and really let these words sink in. Because there is a higher power and a higher intelligence that seeks to express through us as us, as a community. And it is this need for these, indi for these individualized expressions of God to have a community, to have a place of, to belong, and for us to, to rise together and to celebrate together. And as we give of our time, talent, and financial treasure to each other, we also activate the law of reciprocity. And we also receive the time, talent, treasure, community, love back when it's our turn to receive. So I am grateful for this community where we can all be ourselves be our, and have the courage to be authentic and to be vulnerable because that's how we connect with each other on a deep, deeply rooted spiritual level as individualized expressions of the divine spirit within us. So I release, release this prayer out into the universe, knowing that united as a community, we stand and we rise. And so it is. And and now, I would like to introduce our our behind the scenes co-pilot <laughs> and a man that I really respect. And I know he's going to yeah, and, and I know he's going to send the pilot up into cloud nine with these wonderful opportunities this week. Uh, so Jimmy P, go ahead and, and be the captain. Thank you so much, Alan, our A team. Thank you for your uh, kind words. Good afternoon or good morning, community. Thank you for being with us today. Um, I am so grateful to be a part of this community. Um, if you've heard me tell the story about how I found our community, there was an image on Facebook that had all of these people and it was a very inclusive picture. And it made me feel this was a place that I wanted to belong to. So it definitely supports um, the aspect of belonging that we've been talking about all today. So uh, before I go too far, I want to acknowledge a few new names that I saw on Facebook and here on Zoom. There's Greg, Martin, and Kristen. Um, thank you for joining. This is the first time I've seen you here. So I hope that you enjoyed being part of our community this morning. So we want you to go and visit our website. Um, there's no better way to 
uh, support your belonging to our community than to be there. Um, and on the website, we invite you to sign up and subscribe for our news updates. Um, on the homepage, there's a form at the very bottom. You just give us your name, uh, contact information, and we will make sure that we add you to our newsletters and you will uh, be in the know about all the happenings and support uh, belonging to this community. It's a wonderful community. Here is an image of our website. <clears throat> um, we refreshed it a few, a few months ago. Um, so this is where you're going to want to come to get all of our information. Um, we also would like for you to join us on social media. On the previous slide, our Facebook group, uh, facebook.com forward slash CSLCLT, is where you can join us for inspirational quotes um, and announcements that we post there. Um, we post an announcement about our services, um, reminder. So if you're on Facebook, um, you'll always be able to stay connected and, and support the sense of belonging. We talked about donations. We thank you for your donations to our community. It helps us to uh, keep our technology up to date um, and support our program. So thank you so much. And don't forget to support us through the Amazon Smile program. Stay informed and connected again. Visit our website. Um, you can reach out by telephone, email, write us if you choose. Um, but we just want you to be a part and, and stay connected. So we emphasize signing up um, so that you don't miss any of our announcements. Check your email often um, because at different, depending on how much information you want from us at different days of the week, we're always sending out reminders about our consciousness meeting, um, upcoming special services. So uh, be sure and check your email often. Speaking of which, we have two important events coming up very soon. One, 10 days from today on December the 21st, we are going to celebrate with a celebration of light service. We want you to join us for this program. We're going to share traditions, uh, light traditions from around the world. Um, it is an enlightening program. Um, I'm looking forward to this celebration. We invite you to bring some writing utensils because for this program and the next one, we're going to start talking about our affirmations for 2023 uh, and what we want and desire for ourselves. So um, we will be in a good space um, to start setting those intentions. It's going to be um, a celebration of winter solstice. So it's a perfect time, a high uh, spiritual time for us to lock in our affirmations for next year. Then on December 31st, we invite you to join us for our boning, burning bowl ceremony. Here we will um, have a ceremony, ceremony where we can release old habits, old ideas, old things that no longer serve us as we move forward, affirming those things that we know support our highest good. So again, we ask you to bring a writing utensil. Um, for this service, we're going to ask you to write things down, allow us to collect them. And in about five or six months, we're going to bring them back up uh, and remind you of the intention that you set. And we're going to check our progress. So I'm excited about that. So do join us for both of these uh, upcoming events. You've heard us talk about our weekly consciousness meeting. On Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern time, we gather to uh, be in community with one another, really. Um, we talked about supporting one another. We're in service to one another. So on the Tuesday week meetings, I believe that we have what I believe is a sacred service of serving our community. You've heard me say before, allow us to hold you as the focus of our attention. Um, I know that we are making a difference in lives. You hear us talking about our little buddy, Johnny. Um, I have had a few family members, members pass away. Um, and we also spend time holding those that we love in the circle. Um, and it's a beautiful experience if you haven't joined us before. So go to our website, go to the weekly meetings and event link and click on the more tab to sign up for more details. The event page was also recently updated on our website. So um, we've got a, some new cards out there where you can interact and um, you click on the, the little more arrow and it will allow you to sign up for 
our consciousness meeting in particular that I'm talking about. Um, we just concluded a class yesterday called Spiritual Economics. It was a phenomenal class. Um, I enjoy the classes that we all have with each other. Um, it's another way that we are in community with each, with each other. And as you've heard us say before, the, the service door swings both ways. Um, mm -hmm. As we serve one another, we ourselves get served in return. So we don't have any classes coming up right now, but stay tuned. Watch our website. When the next class is announced, you will hear us talk about it here, and you will also see it appear on our website. So um, we'd love to have you in one of our future classes. Tomorrow, December 12th, is the last of our grief support group meetings. Our own beloved Reverend Millie has been facilitating these meetings, and they have been phenomenal. Um, I, I enjoy these meetings that we have because unlike our Sunday experience, we get to talk to one another and support one another and hear us tell things about ourselves that are important and special so we get to know each other a little better. So all of these things, you know, in case you haven't figured it out, this all supports uh, community and our sense of belonging. So if you would like to join us for our final meeting tomorrow, go to our website, visit the weekly meeting and events link, and there will be a place for you to let us know that you would like to join us and we will send you the information and you can join us for our last meeting. Ignore the typo there. Um, I promise you the last meeting is December the 12th. Next up, our Heartbeat Poetry Club. Guess what? Another opportunity for inclusion uh, and belonging. Our special group meets on Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, we have some wonderful poets in our community, and they enjoy sharing their work. If you have not enjoyed uh, a poem or reading from our friends, you want to sign up so that you can join uh, whether, when they meet on Tuesdays. Um, again, it's easy. Weekly meetings and events page. Sign up the link. You will let us know that you're interested, and we will send you the Zoom logistics so that you can join us at that meeting. Our Sunday services are recorded each week, um, and we make them available on our website. This week for our videos, we made a small change so that we can link and upload them on YouTube. So what that means is there are going to be more services for you to go back to um, over time. Um, we went through and converted the last four weeks for you so that when you go to our website, you're not going to notice a difference. You're just going to click the service. It's going to serve it up from YouTube, and then you can watch um, the the past four today. The fifth service will be added, and then the, that list will grow over time. So visit our website for that. Under the More tab, there's a video and an audio link so that you can enjoy both uh, replays in either format that you choose. Finally, we have prayer opportunities, another way for you to feel that you belong. Um, I've mentioned that I have taken advantage of this opportunity. Our beloved Maureen Thurston um, holds us in prayer along with our other prayer practitioners. Um, so when you send in a prayer, know that you are being held and supported um, by this team, our prayer team. Um, Maureen nurtures a prayer tree for us. She is not here today. I wrote down that last week when she reported, we were up to 344 prayers. So mm -hmm. I hope that someone prayed this week so that the number is actually a little bit higher. But if you haven't requested a prayer, I encourage you to go out, request prayer, request it when you need support. And I always say, if you're flying high and everything's going well, then allow us to hold that energy for you and celebrate along with you. So you visit our website, visit the more tab and follow the prayer request link and you can get a prayer into our community. So thank you for listening to our announcements today. And now I return the microphone to our wonderful leader, Reverend Rosedale Jones. You are so phenomenal, Timmy P. Thank you so much. Okay, that's right. Thank you so much, Timmy P. You are just the bomb pilot. I love it. 
you were so informative. I want to join this community again. So anyway, that said, this is usually the time that we talk about birthdays. Now, you know, you all know your birthdays. I may not. So why don't you take a moment to jot down your birthday in the chat? And, um, you know, I don't understand your reasoning for not giving us your birthday, but you know what? How can it hurt? We don't want your date of birth. We're not giving you a job. We celebrate you. So take a moment to jot that down in the chat real quick. And we do have a birthday that we would like to acknowledge it's one of our own, it's Shauna Burns. And so Shauna Burns is very special to me. I call her my spiritual daughter. So anyway, she is uh, celebrating her birthday this week and I'm very happy to do that. I think I asked people to put their, their, their date, date, birth dates in the chat and Millie did. And she had, I loved it because I was paying attention after that. She had a winner, fabulous week last week. So her entire week was all about her birthday and I felt so good for her. So as always, I wanna thank my entire team, Timmy P for just being the pilot over everything. Oh, and those announcements were far non-informative to the hill. That's all I can tell you. And Jeff, and, and, and um, Ruby, I mean, a JT, thank you for that fabulous reading because the reading, just like I said, came to life with the, what is it, the aspect of belonging. And thanks to that great prayer, Reverend Millie, for thinking about the belonging before we got started. And we also have our Splenda, Melissa, who greets everybody all the time inside the service. And then we got Ruby G, who keeps everybody engaged one way or another between Facebook and here in Zoom. So thank you to this fabulous um, A-Team MC. Billy, the man, MC Hammer, whatever you want to call the dude, he just calls. <laughs> so, you know, he, he's also, well, actually, and uh, JT is already the, um, um, giving her an, um, a, a, a thank you in advance because she is our live prayer tech today, too. So, you know, thanks to this entire fabulous pro platform that we have for your focus and your attention to keep things rolling, to give people service in this world. It is so fabulous. So as for our entire community, virtual and wherever you are, make sure you go to cslcharlotte.org and subscribe, put in a prayer request. Also come in and have live uh, prayer at the end of our Zoom service which you can always do, because you'll find that on the website as well. But if you haven't gotten a prayer from us, how powerful we are, then put it in a prayer request, because that means you didn't put one in. So guys and gals and everybody around, put in a prayer request today. Tell us your birthday. Go subscribe. We want to hold you as our a focus of attention. You heard Timmy P. He the one who coined that, and I just took it from him. So for some of you, who find the things that's going super in your life, like he said, great, great. Just tell us, you know, we, we, can, we can praise that, you know, cause praise is just good. Gratitude, gratitude and gratitude is so good. So what's holding you back? Get it that prayer request done. There is nothing in this world that could be so embarrassing. Like I said, we are all people with similar things going on in our lives. Share your gratitude. Share what's going on so we can uplift it and move it out of your life if you need it out. And that's what we want to do. So like I said, don't forget to stay to the end. If you are staying for that prayer where, where it's, live, it's live focused attention just on you. You don't have to open up your video camera. All you need to do is state your prayer and Shut it down and let those words flow through you. I'm telling you, words flow if you allow it. So I'm so excited that we have launched this because it's fabulous. So just know that it's all good, guys. And so before we close out, remember to practice going to that aspect of belonging thought for yourself 
this week because you got to find, you got to know that's part of your life. You can't fight it because so many people may have hurt your feelings. So many people hurt your feelings too. Get over it, you know. And so, so therefore, the, the aspect of belonging is a human need. So remember that first song, if you really want to build up and bone up on it, that you're perfect by Jamie Lua. Lula. And see, I'm not, I am perfect. I just made a mistake. So anyway, once you learn your lesson that you know and you feel and you understand that that is an aspect of belonging and you can feel it, smile inside of you. Every time you smile, every cell inside your body feels good, makes your body happy. So you are the person, the only person that has to be willing to step up and get in to the aspect of belonging. And don't forget this, wherever you are, when you belong to someone or you belong to groups or whatever, remember that song. If you fall, you fall together. When you rise, you rise together. So you know what? I think this last song is going to play really by design because it's all about if you love God, you love people. So you may not call it God. You may call it spirit. You may call it source energy. Whatever you call it, love it. Because when you love it and love people, that's simple as that. Okay? Love God, love people. So this last song is all about that. It's designed to help you feel and seek that aspect of belonging. So let's go with that last song. Keep on loving because it's all about loving. Loving God and loving people is all about that, y'all. If you don't want me to sing, you really don't. I promise you. <laughs> okay. So the next thing. Oh, my God. Got to love this service. Got to love this leader of our community. She's always so happy and just joyful and it's it's contagious and it's fun to watch and enjoy. She laughs harder at herself than anybody I know. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. So after that beautiful service, especially that last song, let us pray. Let us close out in prayer. And so right here and right now, I just know that right where I am, God is. Right where we are, God is. And since we are all one within this family that has been created by God, I know for all of us that we find that community, that intimate community that allows us to express and to just be a part of itself, just as it is here at CSL Charlotte. And I know that for each of us this week, that we take the time to remember that there is a power within that continues to keep us aware of this mm. oneness that we share. And so here we are. Here we are in love. Here we are in peace. Here we are in community. And here we are as one. And with that, I just say thank you, God. I say thank you to that mind that makes it so. And so it is. And so it is, everybody. So it was a wonderful service, and I'm so happy. Don't. You can see everybody. Who else is on here? You know, you know Chris Rock. Which one of y'all kicked me? So anyway, that's enough. But anyway, you know, I'm into movies, right? JT knows, you know, it's like a movie. Okay, so anyway, this is what we're going to do. We're going to, I'm going to say this, bye, right? And then after that, Reverend Millie is going to take all the prayer requests.